Hey everyone, welcome to the Matt Report. As always, I'm your host, Matt, and this is the WordPress Business Podcast where we talk about the business end of WordPress. Not developer speak, not design speak, not a bunch of geeks talking about code, um, but we're talking about real hardcore business facts, what to do, what not to do. Uh, we bring on guests so that they can give us their story so we can learn uh, from, the, uh, from the ups and downs. Uh, and today, I'm joined by Blair Williams. Blair, welcome to the show. Hey, how's it going? Um, going well, going well. Uh, we just, uh, before the show, you had a little chat with my developer. You are the lead developer, creator, mastermind behind MemberPress. Um, let's talk about that. What, how, did you yeah. get, how, how did you get into to WordPress way back when? Uh, and how did you find uh, where you're at today? Uh, well, I actually, um, I've been developing for a long time, and I've kind of gone from, um, I think, starting with C++ all the way to Java. Um, I started with PHP, I think, 10 years ago, and then uh, I moved to Ruby on Rails, which I still use, you know, quite a bit. Uh, but um, I, I think I was introduced to WordPress about, I want to say, four, maybe five years ago. And, uh, oh, it would have been longer than that. It would have been about four years ago. Anyway, um, and uh, it's so great, you know, because I, there are all these, um, I was trying to figure out how to embed a video, and I was used to just kind of doing it myself, you know, with some kind of a, a player or whatever, and a buddy of mine was like, hey, well, you know, you can just go and get a plug-in, and it will help you embed a video, and I'm like, what? <laughs> like I, I can actually like embed a video without going through you know all this code you know including JavaScript files and whatever and he's like yeah he's like it's it's pretty sweet and uh, so that was kind of my my first introduction to it and uh, I uh, I almost immediately just started seeing you know the possibilities of the the platform like from a developer perspective you know I was doing a, a lot of uh, like pay per click marketing and different things. Uh, back then, and um, and so I, that's kind of where I came up with the idea for Pretty Link, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, and I've just kind of been developing on it ever since. It's mm -hmm. it's a it's a super awesome platform to be developing on. So, tell us about Pretty Link. What is that all about? Uh, Pretty Link was kind of a an idea that came from um, me having I had like landing pages where I was selling things online, and I had, and so I just wrote this tool to. Um, I mean, there were other tools at the time that would allow you to, you know, um, redirect, you know, based on a URL kind of a thing. So you could change your URL to whatever you want. They all had um, kind of a prefix. So you could say, you know, example.com slash my cool link slash and then whatever the slug is for the link, right? And I just wanted it to just be straight off of the domain name. You know, I just wanted it to be, you know, just a super short link. And I, I was doing, you know, I wanted to be able to tweet the links and do, you know, different things um, like that with it. And um, and I'd been using Bitly at the time and I think uh, Bud URL. And uh, I wanted to see the analytics of it. So I just thought, well, I could do this in, in WordPress. So I just built this this little script and, um, and uh, open sourced it, put it out on the WordPress repository and... Uh, and uh, it's been a, a really great um, product for not only b me but other people. And so, very nice. You were doing um, pay per click stuff, and you're doing some probably SEO marketing stuff. Were you, were mm -hmm. you, is that what you were primarily making your your living with before? Uh, is web marketing and SEO stuff. Um, I would say mostly development, but um, I have a real uh, inclination towards you know marketing. I you know I love it and. Uh, it's um, it's kind of where the the rubber meets the road in business, you know, where you're mm -hmm. you know you're out there marketing your stuff, mm -hmm. and just so and so that's pretty much what what I've focused on, you know. I think in my business has been developing these tools for you know online marketers and and uh, and people who are doing online business in general. So, yeah. would you would you say that's a fa that's a good uh, market to get into? As opposed to, hey, I want to be a designer or developer for lawyers and doctors and real estate agents. Um, do you think there's a, a real niche in, in going after web marketers that don't have the, the technology chops? Um, you know, I, I do. I think, I, I mean, this is kind of a disruptive market in a way still. I mean, you know, we've been, you know, in the era of pay-per-click and of internet marketing for, you know, 10, you know, 10 to 15 years now and 
And um, I think that um, it's still pretty new to a lot of people. And, and there are a lot of people that are getting into it. And I think that part of the reason why is that, <laughs> I mean, it's the best way to market your products now, right? I mean, I mean, you can access a global market. You can, you can filter on keywords. You know, I was, I was actually thinking the other day about, you know, like just um, my products, you know, that it's like, well, if I were relying on people locally to buy my products, you know, I mean, I don't know anybody, I'm, I mean, here that would be super interested in it, you know, maybe, but like if you go to a worldwide market and you're able to really, um, I guess they call it long tail marketing, right? Where yeah. you're, 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 you're marketing to like the, the, the niche. And, uh, and so that's, I mean, I think that that is, uh, it's obviously where it's at. Yeah. Let's t let's talk about that for a little bit. Let's talk about the the WordPress entrepreneur who's just starting out. They don't even realize they're a WordPress entrepreneur yet. They just want to be the the cool kid that's graduating college, for lack of a better term. And they're hey, I'm going to freelance. I'm going to work out of a coffee shop. It's going to be it's going to be glorious. I'm going to have yeah. all kinds of money coming in, uh, and I have no boss. Uh, they don't realize right off the bat, some of them, that they need to market uh, and yeah. market themselves and, and build their brand. What's your advice to, to folks like that that are just starting off? Um, I would say get something um, out there that is useful to you and, and put, I mean, I would put something, you know, out there that's open source, you know, even though it's, it's not going to make money, you know, right off the bat maybe or whatever, um, it is, it's going to help you to get some, uh, your name out there, you know. Um, and it's, and if it's something that people are going to use, um, then, you know, it's going to be something useful to people and people are going to appreciate that, you know? And so even though like, I mean, truth be told, you know, if you throw like code out there on the WordPress repository and expect, you know, donation money or anything like that, I mean, it, you can get some don donations, but it's not like, you know, super amounts of money. But I would just say, you know, it's just like anything. You have to get your name out there. You have to get involved. You have to start, you know, um, you know, putting your, your goods before people, right? Yeah. And so, yeah. so that they can use them and, and see them. So, Do you think that uh, developers especially might be afraid of marketing because they might mix it with, oh, I don't want to be that salesy, push, pushy person. Um, do you think anybody has that kind of roadblock? And if they do, how do they get overcome that? Um, I, I absolutely think that that's the case. And I, and I think that um, I think a lot of developers, including myself, to be uh, perfectly honest, are more comfortable just... Um, you know, thinking about like the next problem that they're going to solve or, you know, um, you know, Ooh, I want to really use this library or I have developers, you know, that are friends that are, they're just like fixated on, you know, the configuration of everything. And you can really trick yourself into thinking that you're being productive and that you're building your business by focusing on these types of things. But, um, but you have to be careful, you know, to make sure that, you're spending your time doing things that are actually promoting your business and are actually pushing you forward. And I don't think that you necessarily need to be that guy that's, you know, um, you know, that's, uh, you know, that's doing, you know, even, you know, what you're doing, you know, I, I'm not, I, I couldn't, I couldn't probably do a podcast in the way that, that you're doing it. I'm just not, that's just not my, my style. It's not my, my strength. And, uh, you know, I really look up to people who can, who can do that. And, um, and so, and I think a lot of developers, you know, are just kind of more comfortable kind of being behind the scenes kind of a thing. Yep. And so it can be a little bit more, you know, difficult for them to just kind of get out there. And one of the ways that I've gotten around that, I think, is just by releasing, you know, free software, you know, to mm -hmm. people. And uh, it helps me to, to use that as a, I mean, I, and, and, you know, you can go to my blog and I do have blog posts out there, but I'm, I'm not the best at blogging. <laughs> I'm not the best at, you know, any of those types of things. Um, but it's, um, but you get out there any way you can. And so mm -hmm. the, I, I think that the WordPress repository is a really good way, uh, to, to get out there. Um, you know, and I've, and, and, so you let your code basically speak for yep. you, you yep. know, um, and you know, 
whether you're doing that or not, I mean, you do have to learn a little bit about copywriting. You do have to learn a little bit about, um, you know, what you want your graphics to be like or your branding. And you can get help for that kind of stuff for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I think it's helpful to, to at least know about those types of things. So, yeah. the um, You release Pretty Links and then you get the idea for MemberPress. Uh, and that's how you start to to get your name out there. You you open source uh, pretty links. You've obviously done some other development stuff prior to. Uh, and then what was the build up uh, to member press uh, after releasing pretty links? Well, so I had um, I actually had uh, I released pretty link in uh, two thousand nine, and um, I I started off with uh, some membership software. Um, to uh, to have uh, pretty link sold with basically so like I I I, I installed membership software for you know to uh, to sell it um, and then um, you know in fiddling around with it for you know a year or so <laughs> I started realizing you know that there were some real limitations and I I looked into several other solutions and still you know found uh, limitations and. I don't know if I would even say <laughs> limitations so much as just things didn't work. Like I couldn't get cert I couldn't get a lot of them, a lot of these solutions to work, and I couldn't, um, and they weren't simple enough for me. Like I just wanted to sell products. I wanted my software to, to connect to a gateway without, you know, copying and pasting all these little th pieces of code everywhere and you know, screwing around in that, in that kind of way. And, uh, and so I just kind of got the wild hair to build my own membership platform because I just couldn't, I couldn't get the other ones to work for me. Um, and, um, and I, the first, the first thing that I built uh, member press for was to release another plugin affiliate Royale, um, which, you know, is an affiliate uh, program tracking uh, plugin for WordPress, uh, but it was it was built running uh, MemberPress from day one. So so MemberPress, um, it was a very simple version of it. Um, it wasn't you know ready for prime time or anything like that. Um, but that's it's kind of I kind of go by the whole open source mantra of scratch your own itch, you know, um, and um, and it, you know I couldn't find what I was looking for, so I built it mm -hmm. right. And um, and so I'm hoping you know that there are people out there that are you know interested in using it as well. Yeah. You know. So. Uh, and that's exactly exactly what you said before is how do we start off? How do we start to market ourselves? And if you're not going to be the developer, designer, WordPress person who's going to start knocking on doors or sending out resumes and introducing yourself and doing like this big guerrilla marketing push, well, you have the open source and and build a product or service that you like. And hopefully, like you said, a global market, somebody out there is going to like this. Or somebody yeah. might use this. If no one in the entire world picks up on it, on, on it at all, then you go back to the drawing board. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, even if, even if nobody likes it, you know, you'll have something that you can use in your own business, right? Exactly. And uh, I, mean, I mean, I've, I, I mean, I don't. It's certainly a letdown if that's you know, the case, <laughs> right. but uh, but at the very least you can use it you know to your own competitive advantage later on to spin some other product out there. So. Yeah. Uh, so let's let's just talk about that real quick. When you're building your own product, uh, and like you said, developers are very either focused on like the function and how many different options can we have in this in this piece of software. How do you control yourself to, to say no and to ship a version and, and, and a release? Um, how do you kind of control all that stuff so you don't go crazy? Uh, that it's it's very hard, you know. Like when you have when you have um, you know people telling you that oh you know I don't I don't you don't have this feature or that feature that I'm really comfortable with in this other thing. It's it's really difficult to kind of prioritize. And decide what you're going to implement next. Um, and so I wouldn't say that I have like a real super awesome handle on that, you know. <laughs> I um, but but certainly, 
um, you have to have at least enough discipline to not ship a feature before you feel it's um, fully baked. And by fully baked, I don't mean coded. I mean, you have to think through. You know, and, and this is what I, you know, I think as a junior developer, and I think a lot of junior, you know, developers, you know, always think this. It's like, oh, it'll be easy to do. I'll just crank that out and I'll just ship it out and, and whatever. And it's like, well, you know, when you ship a feature, you have to live with it, yep. <laughs> you know. Yep. And, um, and, and, a, and a very huge part of, of being um, a developer or a designer in the WordPress uh, market is support. In fact, your business is support. It, you know, I didn't realize that. I think on day one, I just thought it was, I'm building this cool tool or whatever. But it's like, your your business is support, and you have to have you know a a process to go through that. And um, I think that as you develop new features, even if you don't have the best prioritization, as long as you're thinking through your features, you know that there have been people that have requested it. Um, and, I've, and certainly I weight things, you know, a little bit more. I give things a little more priority if more people are asking for it. Um, but over time, it's just this incremental, you know, adding of features and changes. And, and it really can cut your support down and make your product more um, valuable. But you just have to be patient. It's, right. it's, it's kind of difficult to do sometimes because, you know, we all want everything just now, 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 exactly. you know. and. And you'll have, you know, customers and clients that are just like, I got to have, it, it seems like everybody wants, you know, I got to have this developed, you know, yesterday or whatever. And it's like, well, I would too, but yeah, <laughs> you yeah. have to go through the thought process. Right. So it's, well, it's an interesting um, fork in the road because what happens is you, you put something out there and then a client or multiple clients might say, you know, add this checkbox for this function or add this style over here. And you start getting all this feedback and, and maybe the person who's just starting out is thinking, well, I got to do all this because this is what they're asking me to do. And mm -hmm. this is how I make money, right? So, okay, let's, let's put a feature in. And before you know it, you've feature creeped yourself out of a product. And mm -hmm. then there's no target. There's no niche anymore because you've just made something for everybody. Um, the, and the problem with that is, let's say you, you add in a feature too fast, like you were saying before, and you've realized that people don't understand why you added that feature mm -hmm. and it's just not working. It's even more of a pain to go back and say, okay, I'm going to have to take that feature away from you. And yeah. then pe now people are lost. Now, okay, that feature was there. Now it's gone. Why did they do this to me? Um, yep. It, it can go very quickly from a love fest to a hate fest. Yes. You know, so. <laughs> Yes. And and people are really upset, you know, like if you do take features away from them, mm -hmm. you know, and uh and I, I think there's some psychology behind it, you know, where you know, your the psychology is that, you know, it's a lot more uh painful to have something ripped away from you than it is gratifying to get something, right? Yes. yes. So um you bring up another good point you said you didn't realize that support was the main business uh, in the beginning. Um, now, member press is a yearly fee. Mm -hmm. um, was it just a one-time static fee in the beginning and then you realize, oh boy, I have to make this a recurring <laughs> fee? Well, um, you know, I have Pretty Link is a one-time fee okay. and um, Affiliate Royale, um, so it says that it's a yearly fee, but the the system is not set up to bill yearly and so um and so i i basically haven't you know been enforcing that and i think at some point in the future you know we will turn it you know switch it to a yearly fee but there is a, a there is a, a cost associated with you know the support and and doing the updates and so um and the way that i figure this with uh with member press um is that you know member press is serious software like it it's going to be the foundation of a lot of people's businesses and you know I just wanted to make sure that that I was keeping the eye on the ball everybody was keeping the eye on the ball with this code because you know if you are building your business with something you expect that it's going to work you expect that you're going to be able to build credit cards and you're not going to you know have you know super huge issues and if you do have issues that there's going to be somebody there 
to fix them for you, right? I mean, it's just reasonable to think that, you know, I mean, you're depending on this software, right? And so, um, so that's kind of why, you know, the, the yearly fee has been baked into it. Um, it's, it's just mainly just so that you know that you're going to have somebody there to hold, you know, you're going to be able to hold my feet to the fire kind yeah. of a thing, right? Yep. And, so I, and you bring another great point is, and this has been in the WordPress uh, community ecosystem for a little while now, at least the last few months, that this is serious software and we are providing serious solutions. Now, over the last, whatever it's been, three years of the explosion, if you will, of WordPress to the more common folk, like the one-click installs and I've got a WordPress website and free mm -hmm. themes or $10 themes. So I think the market was so beaten down and there's such a low barrier to entry to this stuff that a lot of people were thinking like, oh God, you know, 50 bucks for a theme or a hundred bucks to buy a, a license for your software? No way. But now I think what we're seeing is the upside of folks who maybe started out a couple years ago and didn't get the support that they were expecting with the cheap stuff or the free stuff. And now they're saying, you know what? It's worth 200 bucks a year divided by 12 months a year is, you know, nothing if you're running an entire business on top of this stuff. Yeah. Do you think we're char – or should we be charging more uh, moving forward? Um, you know, I think, it's a, I think it's a fine line, you know. I mean, it, it just kind of depends on what you're doing. Um, you know, if you have a small plug-in or, a, you know, a, a, you know or, or something that just does, you know, something, you know, small, right, um, you know, I don't think that you can probably warrant, you know, a gigantic, you know, payment or even a yearly subscription, you know, kind of a fee. Um, but if you do have kind of a, a, an, a larger, you know, more mission critical solution, um, then I think that, that, yeah, I think you can, you, you should, you should warrant something like that. And it's, and I don't think that it's even necessarily, um, you know, 100% just to make money. It's a lot of it is just, um, I mean, of course, you do have to make money on 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 any you know anything that you invest that amount of time and effort into, but um, that level of support is not going to be as much as you may hope that you're going to be there for your cu your customer and you're gonna you're gonna try to be there. If you can't make a living doing that, you're gonna have to be your focus is gonna have to be elsewhere, right? right. And so and so to me. Um, you know, having some kind of a yearly subscription or even, you know, charging, you know, more for, for, for something, um, it just helps to, to, to make sure that the support is there, that the right. updates are there. Yep. And, and, and furthermore, I mean, I think if you, you know, if you look at um, building something yourself, right, <laughs> I mean, you know, you'd be spending a lot more money than, you know, a hundred bucks a year on, 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 on this solution, right? Yep. Um, and and even there are even other solutions out there that you could potentially be using that are as much or more expensive, right? Yep. And so, um, I mean, I think it's it's serious. You know, you you're running your business on it, and if you if you take your beer business seriously, right, then uh, then then you're going to want something that is solid. You're right. So, and, and hitting the nail on the head with that is if you're taking your business seriously for both. For both people at play, the customer buying the plugin and mm -hmm. the developer building the plugin, right? Because a developer should be thinking, look, for every dollar that I'm charging, 50 cents of that dollar goes to development, right? So mm -hmm. 50 cents of that dollar is, is my time actually building the product. Another 30 cents or 30% of the dollar should be going to overhead. You know, how, what, what is it? I got to buy laptops. I have to pay yeah. rent. I have to go out, and then you get 20 cents to profit, right? If you're giving mm -hmm. yourself 20 cents on the dollar. So if you're seriously looking at a business, take that into play because then you have to say, okay, well, gee, maybe I shouldn't price it at 19 bucks. Maybe it's worth 97 bucks. Um, and then how do I scale so that I can reinvest in the business and bring more features? Do I have to hire mm -hmm. another developer? Do I have to bring a bigger team on? Uh, which leads me to my question to you is, do, do you have a, any other team members or junior developers working with you on your projects? 
Yeah, um, I have uh, an awesome uh, guy that I work with. His name's Paul Carter, and uh, and we've been working together. He's been doing uh, support um, for um, with me for jeez, uh, I don't know three 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 maybe well probably about three years. I think since 2010. So um, yeah, so he has developed a lot of member press, and we just kind of tackled it as a as a team effort, and. Um, and it's it's worked out great. And I, I mean, having having the ability to kind of bounce ideas off of, of you know, another you know awesome developer, and just try to you know figure out problems, um, I think is is very valuable. It's yep. extremely valuable. So, long term goals are you are you looking to scale uh, into that that uh, bigger software agency or or WordPress agency that we see so many of at WordCamps? Yeah, I I don't think so. Not I mean, I my whole um thing is about freedom. And what I would like to do is develop, you know, a team and I, I think that at some point here we're going to have to, you know, probably bring on another um support person um you know, and hopefully it's a, you know, a very technical <laughs> support person. Uh but um but you know, I I don't know if I would want to have more than about, you know, five, maybe, I mean, ten, I don't even, I can't even imagine even having ten, maybe like five, five to seven people, you know, working on, on products and trying to get, you know, yeah, and mainly to handle the support, um, I think would be, you know, the ideal team for me. And I think that that's kind of the, the beauty of the internet, though, is that, is that you can have kind of a small, you know, lean and mean team that is um, producing some, you know, amazing world-class products. I mean, never in the history of, uh, you know, time, I think, <laughs> have, have we been able to do, you know, as much as we can now. We, ha- we can leverage all these tools that are out there on the Internet. You know, yep. you can, there, there, there are um, tools that, are, that were once only available to, you know, Fortune 500 companies that anybody can use now, you mm-hmm. know. Like we, a lot of our hosting is done on, you know, Amazon, uh, AWS, and uh, we've got some stuff out on Heroku, and we've got, you know, it's like these things, you can cluster them, you can, you know, scale them, you know, uh, you know, whatever you, you know, however you want. Right. Um, We've got tools that are free, basically. (laughs) I mean, it's a, it's a great time. Yeah. You know, to be in a business. Yeah. A lot of people that consumer facing don't even, you know, they don't make the correlation like, you go to buy a car, but cars have been around for 100 plus years. Consumer internet has only been around for 15, right, where people have really been used to buying things on the internet yep. and interacting on the web. Uh, so it's, it is, it's, we're in the infancy, um, and we're in the infancy of not only that, but we're, we're in that nexus of WordPress, who's kind of in its infancy of kind of, it's not infant, but it's still growing, it's still yeah. getting popular. Um, so who knows where it's going to go? Um, I've uh, inter- I interviewed Corey Miller of iThemes, Brian Clark of Copy Blogger, both guys running twenty five plus team uh, companies for WordPress. Mm-hmm. What is it about the large team that you are afraid of, for a back- lack of a better word? Is yeah. it just is just just the overhead of of, of managing a, a large team like that, or do you think that there's some negative side to it? Um, I think it just is, you know, depending on, you know, your personality. And I, I mean, I think, I think, um, you know, those guys are, are very skilled at, you know, and as, you know, Brian Clark, you know, is a skilled, you know, communicator and, you know, blogger, he's a lawyer, you know, like these guys, you know, they're, they're, they're great at that kind of stuff. Um, and, and I am probably decent at, (laughs) but like, I don't really, want to do that. Well, I, I want to be, the, I, I do want to be the guy in the kind of the corner, you know, coding away, you know, you know, answering support emails and stuff like that. I don't want to be, you know, like this, you know, public, you know, well, I don't know. I mean, I, you have to be public to some degree, right? But, yep. but um, I, I think it just is based on your personality, you yep. know, I mean, if you want, if you have a real you know, desire to be doing that kind of stuff, then, you know, go for it, yeah. right? But I think that there is definitely a, um, a place for, you know, people like myself who I just want to have a small team. I don't, I, you know, 
I, I want to have colleagues, basically, you know, yeah. that I'm working with, you know, building things and making things better and, and having, um, you know, and you have to organize things to the point where you can support your product, like I was saying before, um, but, you know, I don't have to have the next Facebook right. or the next, you know, right. I just have to be able to, you know, you know, support myself and my family, yeah. you know, with, you know, by doing cool stuff, right? Yeah. So, and, 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 but it, the thing that I like about that answer is it's a very, it's a very honest answer. Yeah. It's not like you don't care and it's like, ah, oh, whatever happens, happens. It's, I mean, you know what you're going after, you know what the limit is and who knows when you get to that limit, you might say, I can em- employ somebody uh, that can run all this for me and be happy in that position. And, and you might find yourself scaling. Uh, but, but the point is, is that you're, that you have a goal, you have that idea uh, in your head, uh, which is better than nothing and not, yeah. and not thinking about where it's going to go. Um, well, and, you know, certainly, you know, my ideas about it may change, I guess, you know, at some point in the future, I don't know, but, um, but for right now, you know, that's really, you know, you just need to make a living and you want to do something, you know, that you want to do. You right. don't want to have to, you know, go into an office or, you know, do, you know, deal with office politics or anything like that. Yep. And, uh, and this is, you know, where it's at, I think. Yeah. Um, you were saying that you would prefer to be the guy in the corner answering uh, support emails. One of the questions that I usually ask folks, um, we start talking about word camps and the benefits of get, getting to a word camp and interacting with people. Um, so let's talk about that. When you're, when you're at a word camp, and I've witnessed this, where I've seen people not want to talk to other people um, because they're either you know, starstruck, for lack of a better word. They're, they're, they're like, oh, there's you know, uh, Nason or Mullenweg or you know, one of the automaticians. Uh, you know, these guys are great. These guys are super developers or coders. Uh, and they don't want to talk to them. They're afraid to introduce themselves. Um, do you see that in WordCamps? And do you have any kind of uh, tips for folks to start interacting a little bit better uh, when they're at WordCamps? Yeah, I'm, I... Every WordCamp that I've been to uh, has been a great experience. I've yep. I've really enjoyed it, and I I don't know if I've really and maybe it's just that I haven't been like seeking you know these people out, but I, I haven't really noticed too many people you know sitting in the corner. I mean, I um you know the last WordCamp I went to was uh, WordCamp Phoenix, and I had a great time and t- you know met a lot of really you know cool people. You know, I talked with a lot of the guys from like Nine Seeds and. And uh, I'm good friends with, you know, the Pixel Jar guys, Brandon Dove and Jeff Zinn. And, and so, you know, to me, it, you know, WordCamp is, is about, you know, making connections with other developers and other people, you know, in the WordPress, you know, community. Uh, there are a lot of non-technical people that go to those things. Yeah. And, it's, um, and it's great to, you know, kind of get their take on, on things. Um, but in terms of, you know, being able to socialize a little bit more, I mean, I would say, you know, it's very valuable. It may be the most valuable thing to your career. You know, in a in a in a um, in a WordPress based business, to get to the WordCamp. You know, even if it's an expense. Uh, you know, if you have to bl- you know, even buy a. I mean, most of them are. You know, you have local ones as well. But um, it seems like I always end up driving or flying to them. <laughs> so, so uh, but yeah, even if it's an expense, you know, you just have to bite the bullet and and go because you're gonna you're gonna have a lot of great friends. And I I do love like the the speed of the WordCamp. You know, I I remember um, this WordCamp that I went to. It was a OC WordCamp. I don't know two or three years ago, and they they held it in um, uh, a law college, like a you know. And it was on, you know, a Saturday morning. And I remember uh, it was Brandon Dove. He 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 texted me. He's like, "Hey, dude, um, make sure that you don't get confused because they're having a, like a legal, you know, like there's some legal thing going on there." And uh, and so I was like, "Okay," because so there's a registration desk for WordCamp and there's a registration desk for these legal guys. And I <laughs> and so I went in there and and uh, I looked over at this registration table and I just saw these people in suits and they looked miserable <laughs> I was like you know there's there's and then and then I looked over and there's like some guys in like 
like you know t-shirts yeah, and Hawaiian shorts shirts. and flip-flops yeah. or whatever yeah. and i was the like big lebowski I was like, these are my people over yeah. here <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah it is it it is uh it's a quite a a stark contrast uh you know between the two of them um well that's awesome uh it's some some good good advice uh for building the business and uh, how to develop and how to kind of market yourself uh, and all the while having a goal where it doesn't have to be, you know, I want to conquer the WordPress world or I need this fleet of developers. Um, mm-hmm. But understanding that, you know, freedom uh, and, and mixing in uh, life and being able to balance all that stuff and make a living, it's all good. It's all good. All right. So let's jump into the next section of the show. Uh, it's called What's in Your Toolbox? What kind of software or hardware do you use on a daily basis to manage your team or your or your daily projects? What do you use day to day? I think that the, the most um, major thing that I use is obviously GitHub. I'm sure uh, a lot of people use that. Um, they've got some great issue tracking you know, stuff. Um, and that's for basically like the development part of it. Um, for the the support end of it, we use Zendesk for everything, which is a pretty st- you know standard you know type of a thing um, that people use. Um, I I think it's really good, um, and uh, you know we're able to to track you know a lot of different uh, stuff with that. And uh, I guess like as far as like. Uh, cool tools though <laughs> you know, I'm just you know because these you know those are pretty standard you yeah. know tools I think that um, I um, I would probably just have to point at like um, I guess Amazon AWS that might be kind of standard as well but but we use that for uh, for a lot of things um, nice so I'm not I'm not sure um, <laughs> you know it's a it's a good round. If that, <laughs> if that it, you know, I've got uh, I'm all over the map, right? Yeah. <laughs> so. Very 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 good. Uh, let's jump into the lightning round. We'll ask you a series of quick questions, and you have a series of quick answers. All right. Okay. Question number one: the one plugin you cannot live without. Um, I would have to say, hmm. How about uh, Google Analyticator? Uh, very nice. <laughs> Uh, a great a favorite WordPress or business book? Um, Rework. Yes, that is. By good. the 37 Signals guys. Yep. A quote you live or run your business by? Mm. Um, ah, put me on the spot here. Um, oh, I, I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, the best business or career advice you've ever received? Um, trying to think here. Um, charge more. <laughs> charge more money. <laughs> you've given me the best business yeah. advice. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, the longest a client project has taken? Oh, I've had um, one that took... Um, I, I would say probably six months for a for a, a fairly you know decent sized client project. So that's not bad. Uh, the if you had to switch to another content management system, what would it be? Um, I would build my own probably. <laughs> Nine out of ten developers say that. <laughs> um, who should I interview next? Um, I think that it would be great for you to interview Brandon Dove of uh, Pixel Jar. Nice. He'd be a great one. Uh, and what's the one question that I didn't ask you that I should have? Um, where did all your hair go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it was, you're a developer, so you're pulling your the hair out. Stre- the, the stress of, of developing. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, Blair, this has been a great, great episode. Uh, tons of great information for folks to take away, especially if they want to start monetizing their plugins, getting themselves marketed, meeting new people, and all that fun stuff. Uh, I want everybody to go say thanks to Blair. If you want to see more interviews like this, what I'm calling the WordPress business track, uh, mattreport.com, mattreport.com slash subscribe to join the mailing list. Blair, where can folks find you on the web? 
Uh, they can find me at blairwilliams.com. Awesome. And go check him out. Go check out Member Press. We love it. I love it. Uh, it's definitely uh, an awesome membership plugin. Thanks, Blair. Yeah.